In this video, we will go through the takeoff and taxi procedures in the Mirage 2000C. We will look at things you need to do before taxiing, useful tips when you're taxiing, the takeoff procedures, including the correct rotation speeds, and useful HUD symbology. Hello, fellow virtual aviators. We're back in the awesome Mirage 2000C. And today we'll be looking at taxiing and takeoff. Generally, this is a simple process. Uh, you'll need some controls bound to your HOTAS or keyboard. Principally amongst these will be your rudder control, left and right, and your seat height controls to raise and lower your position in the cockpit. You'll also need your nose wheel steering control and your landing gear upbound. Uh, we've completed our pole start procedure and are ready to taxi. Uh, at this point, I would contact the tower if there was an active controller to ask for taxi permission or simply declare your intentions on the online server uh, on its ATC frequency or in single player use, you could use the F10 ATC options. I'm going to demonstrate with uh, the second option there, declaring on frequency at an uncontrolled airbase, as this is quite a common situation on online servers. Uh, before we depart, we're going to check a few things. We're just going to double check that we have indeed got our uh, nose wheel steering on, which we do because it's indicated with a blue light there, and that we've calibrated the barometric pressure uh, on our altimeter. And it's easy to do this on the ground. Uh, we just adjust this until it reads zero feet and it will be correct. But there we can see that the uh, calibration there is 1008. Uh, we're ready to taxi now, so we'll declare our intentions on the frequency. I am currently at Anapa on apron 1, and I know from the wind direction that the active runway is runway 22. So I'm going to taxi via Mike and Delta. Anapa traffic, read 1 1, taxiing to active runway 22 via Mike Delta. Anapa. Okay, we're ready to go, so we're going to disengage the parking brake and throttle up slightly. Now, I normally go for about 67% RPM to begin with, and we're going to use our rudder control to turn them to the taxi brake. The number in the center of the hood, which is currently reading 0 0.03, is your acceleration uh, in G units. So this gives you a good idea of whether or not you're accelerating or traveling at a constant speed. Obviously, if it's positive, you're slightly speeding up. Reduce the throttle a bit. As they approach the turn, I'm going to throttle down and apply my wheel brakes just to slow me down a bit. And you'll see there, using the accelerometer gauge on the hood, I'm slowing down. Throttle up as we come out of the turn. And approach the runway. Napa traffic, Regal 1 1, taking active runway 22 for an immediate departure. And Napa traffic. So now we're lined up with the runway, we're going to apply our wheel brakes to full. And at this point I like to turn off my taxi light, so I'm going to do that. And also disengage the nose wheel steering. It's off. Next, I'm going to raise my seat until I can see an important reference marker on the hood for takeoff. I can't currently see it, it's slightly below my visual range here, so I'm going to raise the seat 
until I can see this upturned T marker here. This is my rotation aid, and what I need to do is, when I move down the runway and rotate, I need to place this on the horizon to give me the correct angle of attack. I'm going to do that at the correct speed, the rotation speed, which will depend on your loadout. Now the rotation speed for a light loadout, such as air to air, or a clean aircraft, would be around about 125 knots. If you're carrying lots of stores, lots of bombs, fuel tanks, then you may need to rotate at around about 150 knots. The procedure is, with my wheel brakes held on, I'm going to spool up to 100%, check everything looks good, release the wheel brakes, apply full afterburner, and rotate at 125. So, here we go. Spool up to roughly 100%, make sure everything looks good, TT7 temperature gauge is not in the red, release the brakes, and engage platform burner. Use your rudder to steer down the runway, and at 125 we're going to rotate, bring that marker up onto the horizon, and she'll lift up on her own. Raise the landing gear. And return to mill power. In this mode here we've got some useful markings on our hood. This plane symbol here is our velocity vector, this tells us where the plane is going, and this is our pitch ladder so it's telling me that I'm currently climbing at around about 11 degrees. This is my airspeed in knots and airspeed in Mach number below it. My altitude here in feet and my heading tip along the top. In this example I've got a heavy loadout, I've got some Mark 82 slick bombs and belugas and fuel tanks loaded. So I'm much heavier and my rotation speed is going to be around about 150. So again, adjust your seat until you can see the reference marker. We're going to spool up, do exactly the same, 200%, hold her at 100%, release the brakes, roll off, apply full throttle with the full afterburner, and rotate, in this case, at 150. So here we go. Release the brakes. Full throttle. Again, use your rudder to steer yourself down the runway. Hundred and fifty rotate. Hold it there. Live raise your gear. So you've got a good rate of climb, you can move back to mill power out of afterburner. Climb to your desired altitude. Once I'm in the air, I normally turn off my anti-collision lights, which are down here, and leave the nav lights on. Also, once I'm in the air, I can get a few systems ready for combat. For example, I'm going to switch my radar to standby mode. This is indicated with SIL for silent, which means that the radar is turned on, but it's not emitting at the present time. Well, I hope that was useful for you. Do you do anything different? Feel free to let me know. Please feel free to do the usual thing, like, comment, subscribe, and share. Virtual Aviators, I look forward to seeing you online in the skies. But until then, this is Reva saying, last call.